So today I'll be teaching you how to attack passwords. In order to log into your phone, to your laptop, to a website, or anywhere, you are typically asked for the username as well as the password. And the password is not something you do for fun in order to gain access to the website. It proves who you are because you only know it inside your mind. So behind the website, behind the mobile device, they have to store your password somewhere in order to do a cross check. So in this case, say for example, you have on the right side a website, they would have something like a database system that will be storing all of this different user information like your username, your password, your date of birth, your credit card information possibly too, and all of those data are stored in the back end. And then when you place your password through the system, it will then do a check against the database system. Likewise, even for your local computers as well as your mobile device, there will be something like a local database system that they store all these different passwords or credentials that you have in order to do the cross check. And if you get the password right, then you'll be issued, say, for example, a cookie. And of course, if you get the password wrong, then you do not get access into the site or into the computer. And of course, our job here today is to learn how to hack it. And right in front of us, we're in Kotlin Linux, which is going to be an ethical hacking operating system. So that's super cool. And of course, we have a browser that's open up to a website. And in this case, we can see Orange HRM. So this is a human resource management website. And right in front of it, we have the login name as well as the password field. And typically, if you are a script kitty, you will be thinking about, OK, perhaps we can just start brute forcing against the site. And brute force attack means we're trying all possible combination of usernames, passwords, possibly those that are much more common. So for example, like admin, administrator, user, and so on and so forth. Against commonly used passwords, say for example, like 1345678, password as password, or Mr. Hackaloy is very handsome as a password. So going back to Analytics, under the Firefox browser, or whichever browser you want to use, you go to the top right corner, and in this case, we have selected Burp Suite on the Foxy Proxy, so we'll be intercepting the requests. I go over into Terminal, which allow us to look super cool like a hacker or like Mr. Hacker Loy. You enter Burp Suite N, so this will start up our interceptor, all right? So this allows us to change up the request, modify the request so they're ready to attack the site. All right, so in this case, we're showcasing to you what is called brute force attack. So you go to the proxy tab and you see the intercept is on. I go back over into the browser. I go and enter, say, a login name like HackerLoy, and I enter a password, whatever password it is. I don't know the password, so I'm trying it out now. Click login. Now, right here, we have interception. I can do a right click, send over to say intruder. And from intruder, I remove all of this, which are our payload marker. So I clear them right here. And you can see right at the bottom, in the body of the request, we have something like text password equal 123456. So this is going to be the one that will be adding as a payload marker, which means that will supply a list of payloads that we can change up as the potential password. So I go over to payloads on the second tab, and I can load right here under the payload options. Click load, and right here we have, say, for example, word lists, and we can possibly use like common passwords.txt. So let's go ahead and double click on that, and we have a list of all these different passwords here. So once you're ready, all right, as simple as that, go to the top right corner, all right, click start attack. Click OK, and attack is going on right now, OK? So once we have that, we see something very interesting, all right? So possibly helping us highlight what are the potential passwords that we can use as part of launching the attack. So I can pause the attack right here now, and you can see right here, we have the status, all right? So we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, password is password, and so on and so forth. And the one that stands out the most is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So from here, I can click on the response, and you can see over here, we have certain information, all right? So 302, 9206 length. So this is very different from all of the other attempted values. So if I go back over to the login page, I can go to the top right corner and I can turn off, turn off the interception right now. I go ahead and do a refresh of the page and I enter hacker loy, follow by password one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, click login, boom, in, done. You've hacked into the system now. And this is the easy part of hacking, but this usually gets blocked out really quickly by some kind of firewall, typically a web application firewall on the front end, or at the same time, an application logic where, say for example, you attempt five times or more than five times of incorrect password, they block you out. So we want to think about something more creative. We are better than doing a profile attack. So you're not a script kitty. You want to be as good looking as Mr. Hack Loy, sorry, I mean, or as cool as Mr. Hack Loy. Then you have to be more innovative than that. So going back to the target website, what we can do here right now is go to the top right corner, 
click under Raw Tools, Web Developer Tools, and under Storage, what we have here is PHP Session ID logged in, and we'll be using these two values to help us copy these cookies, which means that we're going through an authenticated session so that we are able to use those scripts and tools to crawl through the site, looking out for potentially different type of pages, directories that we can go after. So going back to Colonix, right in front of us, we have DRB, which is for us to crawl through the site, looking out for different pages, directories of interest that we can target. And once you're ready, go ahead and hit enter. And now we're crawling through the site. And you can see right here, look, we got all those interesting things. Installer, all right, we have the build, we have teams, upgrade, templates. So we'll be crawling through further down into different parts of the site where we can find things that are very interesting. Okay, so at the same time, let's go ahead and let the script run. So we highlight those things that are most important for us to possibly discover vulnerabilities with the site that can then give us access to the backend database system. Now remember kids, before we continue further, hacking is illegal. The only reason why you want to learn hacking is because it's so they can look as cool as Mr. Hacker Loy. Now look right here, the scan has completed. We're able to uncover lots of different directories. And we have say, for example, lib, common, x ajax, templates, benefits, maintenance, and so on and so forth. So we're able to discover all these different directories as well as possible files or different parts of pages that we can target. At the same time, you can also use search exploit to look up for potential vulnerabilities and weaknesses in relation to say RNGHRM. So if I hit enter on that, you can see right here, we have the following information. So we have say, for example, SQL injection for sort field, local file inclusion, central controller, multiple cross scripting vulnerabilities, and so on. So you can easily study them up. So in this case, we can target say plugins, Ajax calls, hot resume, HSP, and so on and so forth. So possibly this is something we can target. So I've opened up the browser one more time. And what I've done here is I went ahead and enter into this specific link or this specific directory with this PHP file. And I enter the following of new HSP status equal one, employee ID equal two, HSP summary ID equal one. So it state that this is susceptible to structured query language injection. If I put a single code here and hit enter on that, it gives me some kind of error message indicating that possibly, yes, there could be some kind of lack or poor sanitization behind the scenes so we can target this. Next up, because we understand that it is a structured query language injection vulnerability, we can use SQL map to help us with our SQL map, however you want to call it. So right here you can see we're targeting Orange HRM, plugins, Ajax calls, and so on and so forth, summary ID equal one. And we have the following of cookie. So this is the cookie value that we have from the start of the session. And we log in equal true. We have level risks as well as the DBMS. So in this case, when you're searching and understanding about a specific, whether it's content management system or a human resource management system like Orange HRM, whatever it is, you want to understand the structure behind it. And the good thing is a lot of all this open source type of systems, their code is out there. So the structure is out there and you can easily try to understand what's going on. So in this case, we are also targeting HSP summary ID and then followed by DBS. So what we're trying to do now is to think about what is the databases that are available for us to target. So go ahead and hit enter on that. And of course, so let me just go ahead and put a double dash on DBS and we're gonna see the following results. So perhaps sometimes you don't wanna indicate say DBMS. Right, so let me remove this one and let me just go ahead and remove this too. Go ahead and hit enter on that and boom, done. And we managed to dump all all this different information right here, you can see the following. So we have say Orange HRM with possibly other different databases within the backend. So this are all the databases that we can target. So of course, in this case, we're going after the Orange HRM database. Now, because we started the backend system. So what we can see right here is we're using SQL map targeting the same entry point once more, but now we are highlighting here dash D for the target database dash T for the table. So within the database, there are many tables, or possibly even one table, whatever the case is. We have HS, HR users, dash dash dump. So we're trying to dump out all those information within HS, HR users, which can possibly contain the password field tool. So let's go ahead and hit enter in three, two, one, boom. You can see right here, we got a following information. Hacker loy, as well as some form of possibly protected password. And the good thing is out of the box, SQL map allow us to store this into a temporary file 
that we can possibly process later on, or at the same time, in this case, I want to highlight here that I don't really want to store this for further processing in the future. I want to attack it right now. So what I can do now is go ahead and enter no. Do you want to crack them via a dictionary-based attack? Yes. Boom. Done. All right, so if I screw up a little more, we can see right here, we have hacker alloy. We have the protected password. All right, so again, this went through some kind of hashing algorithm. And now this is the cracked password of 12345678. So we managed to attack the password. But it's not all the time that you manage to crack those passwords because the first thing you need to know is to understand what kind of hashing algorithm are they using. So what you can do here is enter, say for example, you have the hash identifier and you can paste the value right here of whatever information you've gotten from the back end. You can enter on that and you can see right here, it tells you that this is based on a possible hashes of say MD5. So what you can do now is you can go over into something called the rainbow table that we can use to do a reverse lookup and see whether we have those unique value available there. So right here, I'm on a website called crackstation.net. I paste the value right here. I select, I'm not a robot. I click crack hashes. And you can see right here, we have following results, all right? We have a result of 1234-5678 as a password and a hash value on the left. So this helps us spit things up just by throwing hashes into the website, which then allows us to look at all this possible already saved value. In other situation, you perhaps found another vulnerability. So in this case, you can see on the left side, we have an operating system command injection. So perhaps you only got a reverse shell. So if I go ahead and click send, and I go back to one of the terminals here. So for example, in this case, I have the terminal here and we have a reverse shell. So perhaps with the reverse shell, you now have an access to the operating system. And perhaps say, for example, we know where at C shadow is. So for, if I was to go ahead and call cat, all right, at C shadow, I hit enter on that, permission denied. So we're not running with an elevated privilege. So we're not able to view certain important files. However, we may be able to find other locations that hold credentials, like usernames and passwords. So in this case, if I go ahead and enter, say for example, LS, I can see the following results. And the one that may be useful for us is DB. So I can go ahead and CD over into DB. All right, I can enter once again, enter LS, and I can see over here, possibly, development.sqlite3 could be a target, all right? So if I go ahead and say I do a cat development.sqlite3, we get certain results out of it, all right? So possibly it may contain some kind of very useful information that we can use as part of finding out where the password is. And just by looking at this alone, you can see some results that may be containing some kind of important data that we can use. So for example, over here, we have Loy Liang Yang at gmail.com, followed by some interesting values, all right? Likewise, can at mattercob.com, followed by some interesting values. So this could possibly be ways where we can gain access to other parts of the operating system that holds credential. Say, for example, we're targeting Mr. Hacker Loy. So you can see the value right here that's right after email which means that this could possibly be the subsequent column that contains the password value. So with that in mind, what I can do here is I can go ahead and copy the value here, okay? I do a, say, copy selection and whatnot, and I can go over into the hash identifier once more, so I can go ahead and exit on this one. I go ahead and enter the hash identifier, hash identifier, followed by the value, I hit enter on that, and it says the following, all right, so we have the possible MD5 hash value. If I go over to crack station, you can see right here, we have exact same value. And this means that the password is 1234567.8. And we also have many other values within the file. So possibly because we have access to the file. So sometimes we may not have access to all of the files, but we may have access to where some of these places store credentials, especially in, for example, like configuration files in environment variables. They may be holding those very useful data that we can use as part of targeting or attacking the password. The other location we can enter ENV, hit enter, and it shows us a lot of interesting information that we could possibly use. So sometimes, some of it may contain pointers to places where it contains those credentials. And other times, it could directly even be 
the username and password itself. So all these are different types of information that we can see very quickly just by understanding where all these different type of potential credentials are going to be stored inside the system.